Proton therapy. Facts about cancer. Cancer is second only to heart disease as a leading cause of death in the UK, with one in three Britons contracting the disease within their lifetime. There have been many advances, but about half of all patients eventually die of the disease. What is cancer? Cancer is fundamentally characterized by uncontrolled cell growth. There are many different types of cancer, each having their own treatment regime. Cells in the body are responsible for a diverse range of tasks, such as digestion, movement, sight, and thought. Normally, these cells work together in a coordinated manner to satisfy the needs of the organism as a whole. This is like saying a society is made up of a large number of individuals, each performing specialized tasks like farming, building houses, and education, all contributing to a common good. Like individuals, cells are capable of reproduction through the division of one parent cell into daughter cells. But this process is controlled to meet the needs of the whole organism or society. Careful regulation is lost in cancer cells they continue to grow and divide when they should not, oblivious to the factors that control the growth and division of their normal counterparts. It begins when one rogue cell proliferates abnormally. It divides to form two abnormal cells, which themselves divide to form four abnormal cells, and so on. After 20 cell divisions, you can get a million cancer cells from a single original cell. What defines whether a cancer is benign or malignant? This is crucial to deciding on the treatment. A benign tumour is confined to its original location, whereas a malignant tumour is capable of invading adjacent normal tissue and spreading to other tissues and organs. So how do we treat cancer? There are three principal methods. Surgery, chemotherapy and radiation. External beam radiation therapy can be conducted either using high energy x-rays, radiotherapy, or high energy protons, proton therapy. So how do x-rays interact? They interact by three main processes. For the energy range of x-rays used in radiotherapy, the most important are photoelectric absorption and Compton scattering. In photoelectric absorption, an incident photon scatters off and ejects an inner shell electron. To de-excite the atom either ejects an outer shell electron, known as an Auger electron, or an outer shell electron drops to fill the gap left, emitting a characteristic photon with an energy equal to the difference between the two energy levels. In Compton scattering, an incident photon scatters off an outer shell electron, losing some energy and ejecting that electron from the atom, ionizing it. The combination of these two interactions leads to a loss of beam intensity with increase in depth. Protons interact by different methods. Energy loss is caused by Coulomb interaction with electrons and nuclear interaction with nuclei. This energy loss is described by the beta block formula, the important parts of which are the z squared over beta squared components. As the particle slows down, energy loss increases. This leads to a, the particle travelling slower still, leading to more energy loss. This produces a characteristic peak in the depth dose curve. This is known as the Bragg peak. The PDD curve of protons shows that they are good for sparing sensitive organs beyond the Bragg peak. Whereas you can see that X-rays deliver radiation before and after the tumour. The result is that protons deliver a more conformal dose to the tumour. This has two benefits. Firstly, less dose delivered to the surrounding organs at risk reduces the chance of a secondary cancer being induced from the radiation. And secondly, the tight conformality allows the dose of the tumour to be escalated. So why are protons not used as often? Principally, the answer to this question is money. Building a linear accelerator that can be used to deliver X-ray radiation costs about £1 million whereas a proton therapy unit costs around £70 million. Wow. There is also a more scientific issue. X-rays have less, 
less conformality, and so there is less pressure on the tumour positioning. The tighter conformality of protons means the patient must be positioned more precisely. Currently, a lack of confidence in correct patient positioning means the potential tighter conformality or pro of protons cannot be utilised. Larger margins are used, given an approximately similar distribution to, pro to photons. Proton patients. The high cost means the NHS are only just building a proton centre. Previously, patients are sent abroad at a high cost. Therefore, only a select range of conditions are treated, mainly difficult head and neck cases and paediatrics. Paediatrics have a longer lifetime than adults and thus are more likely to induce a secondary cancer. Sites that UCLH proposes to treat include the skull basin spine and paraspinal and for paediatrics only, meningioma, pelvis, retinoblastoma and gliomas.